friend's uncle fought the Japanese during World War II. In the Malayan jungle, cut off from his family, he used to sing this song about lost love. Terang bulan dan bintang pun bercahaya duduk termenung memikirkan cinta. The song was called Terang Bulan. His enemy was the Japanese Kempetai who tortured and decapitated our people. Oh, but they love sentimental songs. And the favorite was Terang Bulan. The British soldiers here too loved it. And when the war was over, they took this tune home with them. In England, it was recorded as Mamula Moon and I Shall Return. In Australia, it was Malayan Moon. In Singapore, in the 50s, movie stars would perform at the Terang Bulan Cafe. And in 1957, when this nation became independent, we chose this melody for our national anthem. Negaraku tanah tumpahnya daraku Merdeka, 1957, the year of independence. It was a year of euphoria, passion, and ideals. In his proclamation of independence, Tunku Abdul Rahman, our first prime minister, spoke of liberty and justice. The lyrics to Nagaraku speak of unity and progress. Rakyat hidup bersatu dan maju. Everything was possible. The world was our oyster. Next year, Nagaraku is 60 years old. Grandsons have become grandfathers. Today in this country, the mood is different. Huh? The mood is rather different. But still, this anthem, this song of patriotism, lives in our imaginations. Have you noticed, it's always in the news. Just two months ago, it hit the headlines. Story was that the Chinese, it made, the rumor was that melody had been stolen from a Chinese song. Before that, a rap video which used Nagaraku created a national controversy. And before that, when a singer in a football stadium sang the last line twice, instead of just once. This was a debate in parliament with a member of parliament insisting that that singer should be flung into the sea. Hatan patut dihumban ke laut. Our anthem lives in our imaginations. It has expressed our frustration and our joy. Four years ago, I began to research Malaysian music. I wrote a book, created concerts featuring this music, and got people to sing songs. The public response was enormous, huge. People were really interested. But above all, what they were really interested in, what caused discussions and debates and questions, was our national anthem. It all boiled down to two questions. First the origins of our anthem. Who composed the Garaku? 60 years on, yeah? Who composed the Garaku? And secondly, with all that's happening in this country today, is this song still relevant? Does it matter? Do we care? At the end of this talk, I hope to answer both questions. I first heard this melody as a lullaby sung by my father when I was little. His version went like this. Listen to the words. Terang bulan Terang di pinggir kali Buaya timbul Disangkalah mati Jangan percaya mulutlah lelaki 
aqui. Berani sumpah, tapi takut mati. Crocodiles and betrayal. I was a toddler. What was my father thinking? <laughs> anyway, at 17, it was my first year in London as a student. London was cold, grey. I was lonely, terribly homesick. The student hostel had a piano in the dining room. And one night, as they were clearing away the plates, I sat down to play melancholy music. They switched off the lights, but I continued playing. I played this melody, not as a national anthem, but as a lullaby, as my father sung it tenderly. I finished, turned to go, and found, sitting there, keeping me silent company, six or seven other Malaysian students in the dark. Though it was dark, I remember they had tears in their eyes, like me. But, you know, it's not to say that this melody has always made people cry. In the, 1900, in the year 1900, in Singapore, rickshaw pullers were whistling this tune. The fantastic, fabulous Wayang Kasim, the travelling Bangsawan troupe, had made this a hit from Penang to Singapore and beyond. And before that, over across the Indian Ocean, in Seychelles, in the 19th century, this melody was popular as well, according to Tan Sri Mubin Shepherd, or Tan Sri Dato Dr. Haji Abdul Mubin Marvin Cecil Frank Shepherd, <laughs> who I shall call Mubin Shepherd. The story was, in 1885, when Raja Chulan of Perak went to the Seychelles on a visit, he heard this beautiful melody. He asked, what's this song? And he was told, this is Rosalie by a French composer, Béranger. Oh, he loved the song. He couldn't get it out of his head. And once back home in Pera, he taught it to his elder brother, Raja Manso. Three years later, in 1888, Raja Manso went to England, accompanying the Sultan of Pera on a state visit. When the ship arrived, a British official came on board and asked for the sheet music to the Perak anthem. Now, Perak didn't have an anthem, but Rajamanso felt it was undignified to say so. So he said, just hang on a minute, I'll just... He went off, came back, and said, unfortunately, we seem to have forgotten the music. But if someone could write it down, I could hum or whistle the tune. And this was what happened. As a British musician wrote it down, Rajamanso whistled this gorgeous melody from the Seychelles, and which was played in London. And that, according to Mubin Shepherd, is how Pera got his anthem. Mubin Shepherd says he got this from Raja Halija, a member of the Perak royal family, and her sister and her nephew. So fast forward to 1956. The nation was on the brink of independence. New nation, new anthem. This was the National Anthem Committee, the great and good, led by Tunku Abdul Rahman, he with the circle. In 1956, Tunku Abdul Rahman and the committee held a worldwide competition for the best anthem for a new country. Entries were received from Malaya, Indonesia, Britain, France, Denmark, Sweden, Hungary, Turkey, America, and India. 514 entries. The committee rejected them all. 
you know, it was two months to go to Merdeka. The committee next invited world-famous composers to write possible anthems. They included Zubay Said, who later wrote the Singapore National Anthem. The American Henry Cowell, who played avant-garde music by playing the piano with his arms instead of his fingers. And the Englishman Benjamin Britten, now regarded as one of the 20th century's most important composers. So these and other composers all sent in their entries. The committee rejected them all. In the end, after a worldwide search lasting over a year, which had been so public, in the end, Tuku Abdurrahman chose a melody which was loved by everybody. It was the melody for Rosalie, it was the melody for the Pera State Anthem, and it was the melody for Terang Bulan. So some people got really upset. They said, this melody, why this tune? It's playing in jukeboxes, it's playing in dance halls. It's not very dignified, is it? But Tunku stood firm. And so it was. But on Independence Day, as the new flag was raised, this melody played as a majestic anthem. And again, in 1963, when Malaya became Malaysia, it was this melody that heralded the new federation. Thank you for standing up, but it's not quite over. <laughs> well, wasn't that fantastic? I thought it was superb. My research showed that this melody had been made in France, heard in the Seychelles, whistled in England, and anthemized in Malaya. Too, too perfect, or so I thought. As I delved in archives and databases, things didn't quite fit. Because you see, the Sultan didn't go to London in 1888. There were no records. He went 14 years later, in 1902. But that wasn't with Raja Manso. It was with another prince, Raja Chulan. Here they are, in this photograph taken in London in 1902. Raja Chulan, Tuanku. So, what was going on? If Raja Manso didn't go to whistle this tune and didn't create the anthem, who did? And another thing, who was the composer anyway? Well, some say it was from Indonesia. But Indonesia's own esteemed musicologist, Remy Silado, has gone on television to tell his countrymen that this tune was written by a Frenchman, Pierre-Jean de Béranger, which is what Mubin Shepard said as well. So is that it? Is that the answer then? Who composed the Garaku? Pierre-Jean de Béranger. Well, I wonder, I wonder, because you see, Béranger wasn't a composer, he was a poet, he was a librettist, he was a lyricist. So if he did write this song, he would have written the words, not the music. And anyway, in his 650 published songs, scholars have found not a trace of the words or the title or the music of Rosalie. This was looking wobbly. What about the Seychelles? Any good there? Well, yes, as it happens, happily, in the 1960s, when this recording of the Para Anthem was played over Seychelles radio, an old resident recognized it immediately as a song which had been popular there in the 19th century. 
She could even remember the words which began, La Rosalie assise par sa fenêtre. J'entends la pluie qui verse ce sur son dos. Rosalie reposes by the window in the arms of her beloved as the rain falls against her back. Well, what we know for certain is Nagaraku was once based on a love song. So at the end of my research, what I learned was this. We don't know. We don't know. Some say it was from Indonesia, some say it was by a Frenchman, some from the Seychelles, and some by Wayang Kasim, which had a Javanese prima donna. We don't know. And we'll probably never know. And there's your answer to question one. But the second and more important question to me is this. With all that's going on in the country today, does this melody matter? I think it does. You see, to me, my country isn't a set of geographical boundaries created by politicians. My country is an emotion like this. My mother. My country is an emotion, and the garaku symbolizes that emotion in the form of music, which is direct and pure. And as I found out, in London, as a homesick student, between us Malaysians as well, this melody has meaning. It connects us. It's our memory of experiences shared. Not all good, maybe, but you know, we've been through so much together. We've been through the Japanese occupation. We've been through the communist insurgency. The declaration of, um, we, we've, we've been through confrontasi with Indonesia. Declarations of emergency. The separation of Singapore from the Federation of Malaysia. Racial riots in 1969. And politicians playing high stakes with Malaysia's future. Even when the Federation of Malaya was born, hardly anyone knew what Malaya should be. There were so many desires, conflicting beliefs. It could all have fallen apart so easily. The miracle is, it didn't. Was it skill leadership? Well, yeah, yeah, and luck. <laughs> and and a collective will of Malaysians to somehow make it work, to somehow forge ahead, together. These are the ties which bind. I first heard this melody as a lullaby sung by my father. Later on, I learned it was much more. It was my national anthem. Today, I see it differently. This melody is much more than a national anthem. It's a lullaby, it's a love song. I suggest that we in this room, all of us here in this room, are connected. There's a connection between us. Our country is a giant melting pot, and we carry within us threads of great civilizations of India, China, the Middle East this region romantically called Nusantara. Wayang Kasim was from Penang, but they, they performed in Singapore, and the prima donna was Javanese, of mixed descent. Our prime ministers have in their veins Hainanese, Thai, Indian, Turkish, and Malay blood. Together in this melting pot, we've been through so much. Our destinies and our memories are shared interwoven deep. And this music, this music represents much more 
than the fanfare to launch a nation. This music graced us as a material feeling floating around for centuries. Whistled by rickshaw pullers, sung by soldiers in jungles. Dancing to it, people flirted and accidentally fell in love. This imagined togetherness with others who share our land, our myths, and our memories. This is what this music represents. It reaches parts of our being which are otherwise untouched. May it always be for us a love song.